off the rocky coast of Maine, heading toward the island of Matinicus, alone. My Egyptology professor, Dr. Hargrove, was always recounting his trips to northern Africa in the 1930s and his search for a mystical water clock from the dynasty of the pharaoh Ramses. The clock supposedly had powers to grant everlasting life, claimed he found it once, but whatever Hargrove found mysteriously disappeared after a visit by the expedition's patron, Tess Conway. I've picked up the trail where Hargrove left off. It has led me to Aris Tess Conway's island estate. Tess was obsessed with the occult. Her greed drew her toward Duncan de Vries, a debonair two-bit smuggler. In its heyday, the Conway estate hosted wild, extravagant parties. It has been deserted for decades. Tess and her society friends disappeared in 1932, on the night of the summer solstice. I'm just getting my first glimpse of the house. The weather's getting worse, but I'm almost ashore. I fear my life may be in danger, but I have come prepared. Hmm, that's strange. My watch has stopped. you down at the dock tonight. We're expecting another shipment of arms. Well, boss, where am I going to put all this stuff? I mean, the storage room is almost full. I can't even walk in there. I guess you'll just have to stash it around the grounds. Well, I don't like it. I mean, booze was one thing, but guns, I, I don't know. Quit worrying, Mike. Our new associates from Chicago will be here this evening to take the guns off the island. They will pay us handsomely for the arms. If they have new contacts. We can expand. This is only the beginning.
Gather my spiritual essence from the different symbols which lie around this island. I'm afraid you'll need an invitation. This is an exclusive party. You're wasting your time. The party is for guests only.
base for our operations. Not too far from the mainland, but private. And the Conway's name is like gold. What makes you think that Tess is going to go along with it? So long as I keep her in gin and relics, she'll keep her nose out of our business. What makes you think a blue blood dame like that is going to marry you? She will. Oof, she will. Oof, oof. Remember, you're just a common bootlegger. Hey. Don't ever call me that! I'm a businessman.
like to smoke, we must insist that you use the lounge in the West Wing. But whatever you do, don't go traipsing around downstairs with a lit cigarette, or Mr. De Vries will have hysterics. Should you require a meal, the dining room is located in the East Wing. However, I wouldn't recommend a tour of the kitchen. The chefs there are quite temperamental.
Miss Conway is fond of entertainment, so the house never sleeps. At any one time, you'll find someone in the ballroom. Don't you know anything? It's for playing shuffleboard. Oh. I thought it was another one of Tessa's magic symbols. Well, uh, a mathematician would call it magical. You see, each row, column, and diagonal adds up to 15. Oh, Byron, you can be such a bore sometimes. Help me. Help me. You look ravishing, Tess, as always. <laughs> One would never guess how old you really are. Why, thank you, Lydia. <laughs> and you've managed to hide all trace of your late night carousing. <laughs> I was out late, wasn't I? With the rest of the youth. Oh, listening to Duncan's stories, drinking from his starry eyes. <laughs> That's not all you were drinking from. But I suppose you can't help it. You have inherited your father's penchant for alcohol. Please. Leave Daddy out of it. I'm sorry. Poor darling. It was a tragic death. Did they ever manage to find the body? No. The current must have swept it away when his car went over the bridge. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I just can't believe that he actually managed to wipe out an entire crew of racers as they rowed down the Charles River. It must have been quite a sight. Dad never liked to drink alone. <laughs> <laughs> and your mother's reaction? Not a tear. She just up and joined the Women's Christian Temperance Union. Duncan wouldn't be in business if it weren't for them. Yes, well. He'd better hope she doesn't show up here with her prohibitionists. we just have to lock them up in the wine cellar. <gasps> Ooh! <laughs> Help me. Help me.
Help me. First look up, and then look down. Never play with the naughty clown. any of the upstairs doors. But Byron said it would fit. It's, it's only three feet wide. I believe he said three cubits wide, sir. A cubit is roughly the length of your forearm. Fine. Then we'll open it right here. Very well. I'll summon Miss Conway. Oh, that won't be necessary, Robert. I, uh, I want to surprise her. She specifically wanted to be present when the crate was open. I thought I made myself clear. You are not the master of this house. Yet. 
but that'll change. Miss Conway, I'm quite concerned about you. Why is that, Robert? Since your parents passed on, you've been taking up with a dark crowd. Though the parties and the merriment are only natural for a young lady, but your fascination with time and ancient things are quite irregular. And now that you're... Oh, dear Robert. You miss our old life, don't you? It's not just that. Tess, dear child, why do you associate with this DeVries character? He's not of your ilk. Duncan is my friend, Robert. He gets me things. It's exactly those things that worry me. He's building an arsenal in the store. Please, Robert. I'm tired. And there are gangsters in the garden. Well, hand them some pruning shears. The hedge is atrocious. Uh-huh. <laughs> with her.
Tess, 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 Tess. I'm sick of Tess. I've lived my whole life in the shadow of Tess, and now she wants to live forever. Well, I am not going to spend eternity with her. Ah! <laughs>